Welcome back to Captain of Industry. Today we're doing a tutorial on food, food production, food consumption. Because food is important, don't you agree? I mean, most people need food to survive and Captain of Industry population is no different. On top of that, in Captain of Industry, if you provide different types of food, this will give more unity, a health bonus to increase your population growth and even reduce your chance of illnesses. So really important to understand this food consumption, this food production, if you want to master the game. We're going to talk in particular about how to predict the right food consumption for your population, but also a number of tips and tricks. Don't hesitate to share in the comments below if you have further questions or requests for other videos, like maybe you want to see perfect layouts for food production, I'd be happy to hear your thoughts. Also, don't hesitate to check in the video description below or on my channel. I have guides, tutorials, and a Let's Play series. Before diving into the content, please note that food consumption is actually a setting. When you start a new map, you can see this setting about consumption for the food, for example, and therefore some of the numbers that you see on my screen may be different on your screen if you're playing on a different difficulty level, but at the same time, the concept will definitely remain the same. So let's start well at the start. Food comes from farms. You have different types of farms, the normal farm, the irrigated farm, the greenhouse, and you even have a greenhouse level two. Each of these levels, you know, it's sort of an improvement. It will usually require more water to be given. It will also require usually more fertility, which means probably more fertilizer to produce at maximum capacity. And then, you know, you choose which crop you want to put. You can put potatoes, corn, wheat, soybeans, sugarcane, vegetables, fruits, and canola, and even poppy seed later. As I said, each of these will require a different amount of water, different amount of fertility, and will take a different amount of time to mature. And then you will recall some of these resources. Some of them can be eaten directly. For example, the potato, our people can eat them directly. Similarly, the vegetable, they can eat them directly. And some, like the fruit, you can also eat them directly, but you can also make something of it. As always, don't hesitate to do right click on the resource or clicking here on the recipe button. You now, if we put fruit, for example, you will see all of the recipes that are using fruit. We can make cake with fruit, for example. Or if I click on egg and see I can make cake or I can also make food packs. I do think it's actually missing that we don't see that eggs are being eaten directly or fruits are being eaten directly versus you know, flowers. It's not eaten directly. But anyway, as I said, some of these can be sent directly into the market. Others will need to be treated, will be transformed. For example, here I'm taking soybean and a couple of other things to make the tofu. And this is the tofu that we eat, not the soybean. And as I said, this is sent to markets. You have a market level one, a market level two that you can see here, market level one, market level two. The only difference is that in the market level one, you can only store one type of food. For example, here I can put bread. This is the market level two, I can store two types of food. I can put bread, but I can also put cakes in the same market. It doesn't change my consumption, it doesn't change uh, the unity bonus or anything like that. It just changes how many I can store in one market. But the key thing is that just putting a unit storage next to your city is not going to feed your people. You need those markets to feed them. But if you want, you can also add additional storage, for example, like this, right? This storage can add even more then whatever is needed will be directly sent into this one. So if you want to give every single type of food, you definitely need more than one market. If it's a level one, basically you need 11, one for each. If it's a level two, you're gonna need six of them. And on top of that, when you click on the market, it gives you access to this great statistic overview page, which will show you what is the situation in your city. Show you your month supply, so how many months you have in terms of supply, this is a bit of an average between those different things, so it's not perfect, but it does give you a good indication. You can also see that this number over here is not exactly the same as this one. There's a bit of a difference in the calculation, but it, it basically just gives you an, an idea. Are you running out of food next month or do you have a lot of food in storage, you know? And then you can see also the health bonus that you're getting. We're going to talk about that just now and all of the food that you are providing or not. If you haven't unlocked some of them, you will see them blocked. If you are not giving them, you will see them um, you know, completely white. And if you're giving them, you're going to see them like this, where you're going to see how much unity this is giving, how much you need to provide per minute, the storage that you have in terms of the market, how many months that equals 
And of course, again, this is a bit of a rough calculation. And if you hover over this one here in the corner, it will tell you how many people can be fed by one of these you know, potato or corn, etc. This is once again dependent on your difficulty level. So the numbers you may be seeing on your screen can be different. Let's talk first about the health bonus. As I said, if you provide different types of food, you will get a health bonus. This is the plus 12 that you can see here in my health tab. Or if you go back to your market, this is the plus 12 here. This is linked to how many categories we have. So these are the categories. The more categories you give, the bigger the bonus is. If you only have one food type, you don't get any bonuses. If you have more than one, then you start getting that bonus. Then each new food, as we said, is giving a set amount of unity. Right? The vegetable is 0 0.24. The corn 0.18 etc etc you can see this also over here if you click on unity then you have your food bonus over here in total 4.5 in my case and if we over he over here we can see you know all of the detail where is that coming from but even more importantly each new food that you give is not only giving you more unity it's actually dividing the consumption what i mean is that if you were only providing potatoes for example and now you want to start providing potatoes and vegetables you don't need to keep the same potato production and add on top of that sort of double with the vegetable. What you need is to actually split. You're going to give sort of half of the potatoes and a half of the vegetables. Not exactly half, we'll discuss uh, how you can calculate that, but I just want to give you the idea. The way it works, basically, you know, we can say each person on your island needs a certain amount of nutrients, let's say 100 nutrients per month. So if you only have potatoes, all of the nutrients must come from potatoes, right? You need to give all of the 100 nutrients for potatoes. Now, if you give potatoes and vegetables, let's say that the potatoes now only need to give 50% of those nutrients, like 50 nutrients, and then the vitamins or the vegetables, for example, also will give the other 50%, so 50 um, nutrients. Now, let me show you how to calculate and predict how much food you need. The way to do that is it starts with your population. You take your population number, then you divide it by the number of categories that you're providing. If I'm only giving potatoes, I divide by one. If I'm giving potatoes and vegetables, now I'm giving two. Then that gives me a number per category that we're providing. And then for each of those categories, you will divide that number by the number of food we're giving. So in carbs, if I'm only giving potatoes, I will divide by one. But in carbs, if I'm giving potatoes, corn, and bread, then I'm going to give divide by three. Similarly, in treats, if I'm only giving snacks, then I'll div divide that treat number by one. If I'm giving snacks and cake, I'll divide it by two. And then for each of those numbers, you will divide it by this number over here, which is how much one unit of that food, how many people are fed. And again, that number can be different based on your difficulty. And this will basically enable you to calculate this number over here, the 11.7 per minute. Why would you want to do that? Well, for example, here, of course, right now I have 3000 people. I know this is 11.8. But let's say that I want to predict what it will be when I will be at 4000 people. Then I can do it. I can put 4000 people, do that calculation, and it will tell me how many potatoes I will need at 4000 people. And therefore, I can plan my farms, I can plan my layouts, that therefore I can be ready for when I get to 4,000. Because you basically want to be ready before you get there, right? Like you can't just wait to be there and then you don't have any food left and then you're in trouble. Let's do a very quick example. Let's say that my population is 4,000 and that I'm giving all of the carbs, you know, let's put a one next to it to remember. I'm not giving any of the proteins for some reason then I'm going to give only vegetable but not fruits and I'm going to give all of the treats right so in terms of categories I have three categories I have the carbs the vitamins and the treat so first we're going to divide this population number by three then inside each of those categories we're going to divide by the number of food that we're giving in the category so for example here in carbs I'm giving three so once again we're going to divide that number by three Versus for the vitamins, I'm actually only giving one. So we're dividing by one. So this is the same number. And here for treats, we're going to divide by two because we're giving two different types of food. And then we need to divide those numbers by how many population is fed by one of these items. This is, for example, in the easy setting, those numbers over here. 
And so now I have predicted that when I reach a population 4000, if I give only these, I will need, for example, 20 potatoes per minute, almost 14.5 corn, almost 10 bread per minute, etc. etc. If I decide to give more uh, types of food, then this will decrease. If I decide to give less, then this will all increase, of course. My population increases, this will of course increase too. One small caveat is that if you do this calculation, you may not reach exactly the same. Let me show you with this example over here. I have 3120 population and I am giving everything. This is supposed to be 11.8, we can see 11.7 here. 8.4, 8.3, 5.7, 5.6. So you see the idea, this is not exactly the same, but it is very, very close. I mean, I'm 99.999% sure that my calculation is correct. This is the right way to calculate it. But there is a small rounding error somewhere, which in my opinion could be in two places. The first one, it could be in just the display. You know, it's saying 11.7, but actually in the back end, in the engine, it is 11.8 and it's just a small sort of UI issue in terms of the display. To me, that is unlikely. What is a lot more likely, in my opinion, is that this number over here, where it says one meat feeds 34 people exactly, I don't think this is right. I don't think this is exactly 34 people, because also all of them are round. I don't think that works. I don't think that's real, in particular because this changes based on the difficulty level. I don't think they should all be round number. I think they are actually rounded, that in reality it's not exactly 36. Could be 35.8 for example or whatever it is and the key reason is actually because i think that in the engine they're doing the opposite they're not saying one cake feeds 30 people they're saying one people needs 0.005 cakes right which is one divided by 36 and they just decided to show it the other way around because it's easier to comprehend it's easier to put you know, a real, a real big number, because 0.0 something wouldn't really look really nice. But yeah, this is why I think these 36 or these numbers over here shouldn't actually be rounded. They are actually very slightly different. And therefore, this is why we can't calculate exactly precisely uh, the number. But again, if you look at this 11.8 versus 11.7, that is good enough for you to plan your city. Right? You're never going to plan anyway with that small decimal because you anyway don't have that level of details or this precision to manage you know in terms of your productions or even in terms of your farms so anyway you'll always have to produce a bit more than what you need and therefore i think you know this is fine to use this calculation like this while i think those numbers are not exactly perfect you know 34 maybe in reality 33.9 or whatever i do think those numbers are actually very crucial because they show you which one you may want to prioritize if you can't feed everything. Let's take this example over here. One meat feeds 34 people. One tofu feeds 52 people. So if you're very limited, it seems you know a better idea to just give a lot of tofu rather than to give a lot of meat. Of course, it's only one side of the coin. The other side is how oh, easy is it to make meat versus how oh, easy is it to make tofu. In particular, how oh, easy is it to make one of each the other half again is how easy is it to produce and in particular you know you can see here big differences right you can see that for four months i can make 99 corn and in those same four months i'll only make 33 soybean that's a huge difference for basically the same amount of water and actually here you need even more fertility so you know it basically here shows that corn is a lot easier to make than soybean but again this is also just one part of the equation because if one soybean feeds 10 times more people than one corn, then you still want actually to do the soybean. Okay, I hope this short guide around food, on food consumption, food production was useful. Don't hesitate to tell me in the comments below if you have further questions, further requests for videos. I'd love to hear about it. And I hope to see you next time.